Scotty Elkton with Silly Film News here at the Dallas International Film Festival with the team behind While I Was Gone. Guys, if you want to introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Daniel Pfeffer. I'm the director of While I Was Gone. Um, and I'm Lucas Monroe. I'm the lead actor and creator of While I Was Gone. So uh, let's start with, with this story. And um, you know, it's fascinating because we n never get to meet the other part of the story, basically, the other brother. And that's something fascinating to have a character that's only represented through you know, other people. Can you tell me about wanting to tell a story that obviously has impacted your life, but you know, you're not going to give us everything. Like you, you just give us your story, and I, I love that part of it. Yeah, um, it it all just stems off of real events. So, you know, my brother was really never present during that whole ordeal of me going on that journey of searching him. So, that kind of like we kind of wanted to make it as real as possible. So. We tried to, me and Daniel, while writing it, tried to make it so that you would understand that my brother was present, but he wasn't there. How did you guys connect and, and want to bring this to, to light and remake the story? So it was, uh, it all started um, about a year and a half ago. Lucas wrote to me, uh, we went to uh, elementary school together. So we've actually been friends for many, many years. Um, but, uh, you know, we had grown distant after high school and stuff, but kind of kept in touch. And uh, one day he, he uh, messaged me about wanting to write like a memoir sort of book on his life and said, you know, there's a lot of things that people don't know about me that I think could be really interesting to bring to the foreground. And uh, I said, well, I don't know much about, you know, novels and writing me memoirs, although I'm sure it would be great. But maybe we could collaborate on like a, a little short film or so. I could start with like a script in a short film and so it kind of evolved from there and we took the chance like Lucas had never acted before and so that was another thing so we started off with like directing actor exercises and camera exercises in New York he'd come up from Ithaca to the city and we'd shoot around Columbia and just kind of see and I started seeing how good he was and really I think the, te the it, uh, it was most telling when we had a you know a real aspiring professional actor come to play uh, you know a little skit with him and he was and Lucas kind of blew him out of the water and that's was really the deciding factor to go into to make the short really was it scary though because I mean you are in every sequence and I mean we get to see you in all corners and especially I mean we, we physically we get to wrap around you throughout the film I mean that's kind of the greatness of the ending I mean you're always on camera was that a scary thought process for you to be doing that um, no, it wasn't really scary. I mean, at first it was a little nerve-wracking because it's your first time in front of a camera and, you know, I mean, you have all these kind of things that you shouldn't do, so. <laughs> but after, you know, after a few takes, you kind of just get in a rhythm and with the help of Danny, you know, kind of coaching me and letting me know, like, oh, this is, this is when you need to relax or this is when you need to do this, it, it made it a lot easier. And Serendipitous in that way. Yeah. And uh, also, because you were such a great athlete in high school and stuff, I think like uh, repetition is like ingrained in you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was able to pull. That's why we were able to really pull off all these wonders because he's he like could do the same thing seventeen times <laughs> until we got it right. Uh, I think it came to your benefit at that point. Looking at um, the family dynamics and especially the conversations or the the big conversation with um, the mom in the story, um, the, the word that popped up and it's in the script is enabled or enabling someone to do something. Can you talk about that being important to the whole scope of, of the subject matter? And that's really, you know, do you enable someone or do you not enable them? And that's kind of the, the staunch problem that you and the mom character yeah, have yeah, is yeah, that's you're the opposite. You don't want to necessarily allow your brother to do this stuff and still be okay with him doing it. Yeah, um, yeah that's kind of like the uh, everyday battle that we kind of deal with in, in that situation. You know, my mom is like a very loving person and you know, she just does everything for everyone and doesn't realize that sometimes it's just not, it, it's best to, to back off and, and let it be and not be so involved, you know, to let that person actually find out what it is that they need to fix or, 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 or be helped with, so. Um, 
and there's something universal and relatable about it because everyone has sometimes you know struggling family members and there's something sort of from here to moscow yeah, that can yeah relate yeah. to it you know yeah i feel like a lot of people can relate to that particular um situation i mean especially nowadays with i mean everything going on in terms of you know this epidemic drug epidemic that we have so yeah i feel like a lot more people can relate and when at the time, you know, it was interesting because the conversation was improvised. So Darlene, uh, Lucas's mom, was, uh, she, we, didn't, we didn't actually write those words. Those were her own words and how she was really feeling at the time. Wow. And yeah, so, so we literally it was a one hour. literally drink coffee, smoke a cig, and that was a conversation that me and my mom would have. It was almost like therapeutic. And they just filmed it. So. Well, that's amazing because I, I mean, it's powerful. It's a very powerful, and it's the whole, sets up the whole sequence of events that's, right. that's amazing to catch it it's just y'all two talking it was an interesting process it was we we, we said we want to make it look like a painting so that was the what the cinematographer ryan set it up for us that way so once we had the painting the canvas frame uh we we uh just let them get in their positions and and go through it. and we did it like maybe three or four times i was like, so the first take was like 10 minutes long the next take was like seven minutes, 30 seconds long. And the next take was like four minutes. And then finally we got it to like a two minute, 30 uh, one Wow. And by that point, you know, they were worn out. But <laughs> but uh, yeah, they were just these can they were a candid conversation about how Darlene was feeling about it at the time. And, that's, you know, she chose to even uh, speak kind of on, uh, directly in the way, like uh, about the subject in that way. That yeah. was all her choice. Yeah. I love the ending where she's like, ah, the chicken's ready. All right, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, talking about um, the the DP work and, and the look of the film, sure. um, the the difference between the exteriors compared to the interior of the home, um, the fact that even no, even when we're inside the home, you do have shots of like the outside window behind Lucas. I mean, there's always seems to be like the outside impact. Even the audio, like you always hear the road whenever Lucas is inside. And you talked about merging those exteriors and interiors and then, you know, finding that look, you know, sure. especially with Ithaca. I mean, you showcased it a lot in the film. Sure. Um, well, <clears throat> actually, part of it is just the, the physicality of it. So the, the sound guy is really picking up all those sounds. Um, now, he was able to, I, we were very purposely, like, trying to uh, incorporate, like you said, nature sounds, the highway sounds. And in the mix, uh, Al, the sound guy, was able to um, sort of play with, with, with the levels very well in the distancing. So part of it was the actual, that was just the environment. And then the other part is, you know, slight manipulations that uh, amplify or bring down whatever it is we're, we're trying to do. If we want to hear the voices more, you know, but... Um, but yeah, it is very purposeful because Ithaca is, in the summertime becomes is like a very jungle-like almost. It's it's got a lot of trees. Yeah. It's like cicadas are roaring. Yeah. Um, and they make a presence in the film. Totally. totally. That was in our that was right in my backyard where we shot those plates. With, um, so, what about um, the coloring? Um, the blue for the exterior and then interior. You guys allow a lot of shadows and and it's dark. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And so, <laughs> It's always a risk because you uh, you probably shouldn't you know uh, try to shoot that dark all the time because it could it can back backfire on you. Um, but we decided because there was so much um, green shrubbery and sort of branches literally like uh, invading the, the windows and stuff. Uh, the DP again wanted to you know just accentuate that with lights coming through the window, and so a lot of that green tint inside when mm -hmm. he first talks to his mom. That's literally like um, lights um, playing off of plants in the house. Uh, it's just a natural bleed from it's the... It's a natural bleed. Wow. Isn't that trippy? Yeah, really trippy. Yeah. And then the contrast it with like all the blue of yeah. like the water. I mean, you can see in the exteriors the right. blue... Yeah, so that was conscious. Yeah, like a colder sort of mm -hmm. dawn or dusk uh, yeah. look for sure. Um, one of my favorite sequences is when you find your hat. <laughs> and the car sequence. Tell me a bit about that scene, and, and that's obviously the most um, action-oriented moment in the film. Yeah, I mean, that was the funnest scene, I think, you know? <laughs> um, 
We did have a blast. Yeah, it was fun, you know, from the, the, the beer bottles being thrown to chasing them down the street. Uh, Josh is just a great dude, good actor. Um, yeah, it was just a, a fun scene. On and a we little. had six takes. We had six yeah. bottles, six candy glasses. So we had to pull, we knew we had to pull it off in that time. Um, Can you talk about, you don't leave the car though, the camera. Right, well that's actually interesting too because we did two versions. So I always wanted to, to have it in this one or that I always was telling Lucas about. I wanted to be like, uh, I want you, because cinema to me is up close and far away. And so I wanted uh, to kind of like where we're both with Lucas and witnesses at, in that situation and we feel sort of out of control so that's why the wonder was sort of possibly uh sort of important for me because i wanted to show how lucas is both in control and losing control of the situation in a way and he's both comes we're up close with him at one point and then we're also far away observing it and it's even fluid because even when when you chase after him that sequence you still capture it from that vantage point and i was uh, like that's well, right. that's really that must have been tough as hell because I mean, he jets off. I'm like, oh, he's got to be out of the shot. And we didn't even have walkie-talkies because we're so gorilla. So we're actually, we had a great AD, uh, and uh, this guy, Nick Grau. Um, shout out to Nick Grau. <laughs> and, you know, and he, uh, basically, he would be yelling the coordination so that, <laughs> and so since we didn't have walkie-talkies, then, you know, Lucas would start way down in another almost two blocks away. And so, you know, because we wanted to, like, ha have a lot of driving anticipation sort of, you know, leading up to it. And then we, to back it up, then we had him, we actually got coverage of him and Joshua Rivera, the other, the one other actor in the film, <laughs> that's not a non-actor, um, do like, you know, traditional coverage. But mm -hmm. that was really backup, because if, if the oneer was gonna work, that was the plan. And it did, yeah. Yeah, and it did, thank great. God, yeah. Um, let's talk about turning this maybe into a feature or telling more of right. your life. Yeah, um, that's, that's the plan. Uh, I think we uh, planned on starting that one June, July. 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 We're actually planning on shooting this um, July. Yeah. Yeah. The feature kind of sequel, and um, the name of that is um, "I'll See You Around," which is kind of a spinoff to "While oh, I Was Gone." Oh, yeah. So, and that's that's more about um, the uh, relationship aspect of this whole this whole ordeal of. Um, you know, it's uh, it's kind of part about my brother, but more about me and my and my side of the story and what's going on with me and what I'm dealing with in terms of my life and relationships and adulthood. Adulthood, yeah. And also maybe what you're studying for or what you're, because I love the fact that you know, I mean, it's a laptop that's important in the back. Yeah, it's and that, your and that comes back. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's a big part of it too. I'm in school and. You know, I have I have three kids of my own, so I'm trying to like juggle and maintain all these things at once, and you kind of see the stress, the happiness, and everything unfold. And and we and so we've been writing it together as in the um, in chapters, so it's almost like a little paperback novella in a way, mm -hmm. and each chapter is almost its own little short. So the idea is like each chapter is a seg a, a relationship in your life, yeah. a, a slice of your life. Yeah. Um, and so it's very still like in the docudrama like that. Um, a lot of your family will return and yeah. then we'll try to get a couple of professional actors for little supporting roles. But for the most part, we'll keep it to this like 50-50 docudrama sort of project. So the young girl in the story, is that one of your daughters or? Yeah, that is actually my youngest daughter. What was it like being able to introduce her into the film? Because you could have easily, I think, cut that side out of it, but having her just in that moment where she's getting taken by, you know, by her mom, just yeah. that little moment of you with her changed the whole scope of your character. He's not just someone going to school. Yeah. He's got to go to school. Yeah. He's taking care of her family. That's right. Yeah, um, for her, it was, I mean, the whole operation was kind of like, it, it worked, you know, she was so... It's the first thing we shot. Yeah, like she was so <laughs> just like in tune with it, like she did everything perfectly. Like it was just, it was really easy. So we didn't really have too many. And she's coming back for the for the micro budget feature. So and she's a little more grown she now. Just so. like knew what she kind of knew what we needed and and did it. So how many days? Do you mind if I ask? Yeah, no, we shot this in three and a half days. Yeah. So exteriors included, like the yeah. waterfalls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, and no pickup. So it was, it was a pretty tight ship. Wow. Yeah. Thank God we have some great producers back in New York. So that's, 
kudos to them for yeah. scheduling and 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 the again the assistant director it was just really uh yeah the, for some reason it w- it really worked like a well oiled machine i don't think i've ever done a short that um sort of that successful even in not just in the end product but the process itself and how tight it was and yeah, i think everybody we took a lot of risk thing. and it all fell into place this time and you're always taking a lot of risk but sometimes you know one part gets a little burnt and another part is you know a little over the top and you know it's never exactly how you want it to go and this was closer to kind of what we set out to do which was wow. yeah yeah good job that's impressive because we see it i mean i saw it when i saw it um so i've got to ask you know diff really loves bringing you guys from new york down here you guys make very intelligent thoughtful films um what are you looking forward to seeing this is a southern audience but it's very much uh dallas is still a big city i mean I think the universal themes will obviously be reflected. And sure. can you talk a little bit about bring it, you know, to the south, but also, you know, the shorts block. And you know, are you excited to see what the merge of this interesting shorts block? It's it's a it's one of the more dynamic shorts blocks I've seen. Diff create. It's it's very wow. powerful material. Wow. Um, I was just uh, impressed and humbled, like I said when I saw like Project X is in there with us. I was. Um, I was telling uh, uh, Lucas how important the, the, some of the filmmakers are there, and that we're just honored to be here. And yeah. I mean, also I couldn't ever expect we made a film in Ithaca, New York, and we're being uh, loved for it in Dallas, and yeah. it's a great so place to premiere. Away. I mean, yeah, it's kind of trippy. Yeah, I mean, t- to me it's great. I mean, it's very humbling. Uh, I'm I'm just very excited to be here. This is my first everything, so it's like. You know, taking this in is all very soothing almost. I feel it's, uh, driven. I feel like I can, you know what I mean? I can start to really focus and, and, and start to really get a grasp of this whole acting and directing and writing world and, and really go hard at it. It's exciting. It it's, is. It's new to you. Very exciting. And our Uber driver decided to take you guys on a tour of our downtown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got yeah. to see the other. The other <laughs> we got to go by Deep Deep Ellum. Deep Ellum. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Deep Ellum looks like a fun little strip. I'm sure you guys will have some time to see other parts of Dallas, um, but we really appreciate you guys coming. Um, the film is great, and uh, yeah, we love having you folks from the New York come down. It's you guys are making great films. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I think Shorts Program Three is is going to be a hit. Yeah, I have a feeling. Definitely will. Project X on down, it's something special. Yeah.